Давай! Slightly overdramatic intro to a woodworking video. Let me bring you up to speed. If you are new here, late last year I busted down and harvested 20 pallets into these glorious slabs to establish is it worth it. I think it was. However, it is the projects from here on in where I hope to prove to myself and to show you how far you can stretch your best pallet stuff that you have so patiently and painstakingly collected. I'll resaw the slabs down to five millimeter veneers and try to figure out how many slabs I'll need to use. I will lay them out as I go. End result is I think three slabs should do the job just nicely. I'm using the leftover plywood from my last project, which when I glue them together, gives me a continuous length of 2.8 meters or about nine and a half feet for those who refuse to use a tape measure. I have chosen a pattern that won't waste too much stock, but also look a little groovy with the plan I'm forming in my brain. I also have this sheet of form ply that I purchased for prototyping reasons on my last project, which in the end I overthought and I didn't actually need it. I conducted some extensive market research. To figure out what type of furniture piece would have a good chance of selling, my market research consisted of sitting in front of the TV and looking at all the streaming services and the amount of TV content. It is literally out of control, which said to me, people are staying in more than ever and binging the new TV shows. So with all those big flat screen TVs out there, surely someone will want a nice, new, unique TV cabinet. Made from pallet wood, market research complete. After completing the 20 hour dining table project, I needed a project that was a little less hour intensive. This time I don't have a commission. I have to simply make something and try and sell it. I also want a project to get creative. That'll let me maintain the momentum with the time that I have at the moment. What I'm after is something rewarding for me without a high amount of work hours. How I'm going to do that is use what I have right here, right now. Which if you recall from this video, is what I'll be doing for most of the projects over the next few months as I work towards my goal of the new table saw. So while I'm on the journey of business human discovery, I wanted a piece of furniture that can fetch a nice profit without falling into the large dollar category that is generally associated with the big ticket items like dining tables. I think this project will have a very nice risk to reward ratio. At the moment, the cabinet has these two large storage areas, probably a bit too big for anything other than unnecessary throw pillows or piles of board games. Let me keep going with the lamination while I think about those spaces. So I decided the spaces are simply too large and they really need to have some useful spaces for things that get plugged into our TVs. I'm going to have to make a couple of drawers. I hate drawers. The base cabinet will also need some doors, which I'm going to say I'll probably hate equally as much as the drawers. However, I think I'm going to have to put my big boy shorts on and just get started. See what I did there? It is time to bend this massive slab of pallet wood.
I've whipped up this Dodgy Brothers 1000 square so I can start cutting. A heap of kerf cuts with my circular saw. I make a few passes, test as I go, make sure it's bending. It is, however, I am a little worried it is not bending easy enough. I make a few more cuts, still not bending, starting to get a little concerned. Cleaning out the sawdust has helped a little. I will just keep cutting. She'll be. Here is my hello dickhead moment. This section will not be bent. It is on top of the cabinet. I need to keep cutting in the other direction. My main fear was cutting through the other side if there were any different thicknesses in the pallet lamination. However, I think the thickness of my lamination is why it is not bending. So I lowered the blade and I recut all those passes. I'm about 80% confident now. So I'm going to start the other end while some of the patch up glue dries on the first end. Here is my test pieces. Unsure why I'm not having a win. Starting to freak out a little bit. I think I better go and have a sleep. Post sleep, I busted out the belt sander and thinned out the veneer around the kerf cuts. I think I'm going to be okay. I can now bring the two large parts together and I have my table saw workspace back at least to keep on going. Let me throw in a quick shout out and my inspiration for wanting to try this technique. Make with Miles. He created this beautiful record player cabinet with an extraordinary amount of complex woodwork techniques. What I love the most though, was his willingness to give his time to this piece. I don't want to spoil his video. However, time, don't waste it, truly rang home for me in his video. The irony is not lost on me that this young fella made a record player cabinet and I am making a TV cabinet with spaces for DVD players and even the VHS. Now I understand I went overboard on the kerf cuts. No big deal, as I'll have to make the framework to support the kerf and give this cabinet its unique shape. Again, I'm sticking with this form ply. I have my trusty circle cutting jig, some basic geometry skills, and my straightening jig, now a tapering jig, to create these curvy McCurf face supports. Feeling pretty good at this stage. Time is blowing out a little. However, lots of glue and clamps. What could possibly go wrong? While the Kerf glue party is drying, I'll carry on producing some more stock for the other bits and pieces. I need some of this decking for the skids for the cabinet and the rest is for veneering the drawers and door fronts. Okay, gotta keep on going. What I initially thought would be a pretty quick and easy project is starting to prove it is quite the opposite as I discover more and more little steps and things I did not consider when I did my five minute sketch on a piece of paper. No matter, it is all going into the business human handle. I have these Tassie blackwood doors, which I'll use for the trimming when I get to that. And I had to buy another sheet of ply for the drawer fronts.
quick test run of my door making abilities before I go ahead and glue on the rustic charm. This reclaimed decking is the gift that keeps on giving. I am starting to cruise along now. Trimming goes on, more fluff to hide the things, more steps, more time. However, all is going quite well. Happy days. Let me show you what I have managed to do at the 19 hour mark into this project. During the clamp up of this side of the cabinet, I have managed to skew or pull this end off square. Didn't check square, just clamped it up. You can see the distance up here is quite large and down here is not. So when the draw fronts go on, I have no lip. Down the other end, beautiful. This end, no good. And if I don't seem overly frustrated, it's because I've had a few days to cool down and figure out what I'm going to do. The options I had were try and camouflage doing things and then selling it at a massive hairy discount i don't want to do that i want to get better at this i want to give this cabinet the best chance i can to get the best profit for the hours that i've put in what i'm going to do is chop this whole side off i want to keep it symmetrical so i've got to come up with something that looks cool but works so i've got a plan in my brain I'm gonna get started on that and hopefully pull it off. <laughs> the other deciding factor here is see how things just didn't bend quite right. I tried to smooth this off and I've up here, I've actually broke through the veneer, which I thought I may be able to get away with that one for a big hairy discount. Um, but then I had a heap more. So this side's days were numbered well before I spotted the major balls up. The plan is to keep this cabinet symmetrical. I want the curves on both ends, so I'm thinking I may be able to create a little side area, call it the artsy side, so I can get away with it and hope it looks okay. I'm going to use more decking leftovers to slice up some even thinner strips so I can attempt to bend this timber without steaming to replicate the same curve profile end that I had. I used the thickness of hack to get these strips even thinner as they were not bending anywhere near the desired result. I salvaged the form ply framework and that became my mold for the exact shape that I needed. I glued the thin strips up in two stages which made it far more manageable. This is pushing the limits of a non-steam bend with this particular hardwood. My side arty thingy is going to be a large book area which I hope will give it a few more creds when it comes time to sell it. I have more hardwood decking and I am making a very simple skeleton frame, which again, in my brain, at this stage should work just fine. Time is starting to really blow out. I've got lots of little jobs on the go to wrap this thing up. Doors on, drawers on and working. Neither cause me much grief in the end.
The simple skeleton frame is coming together with some of the finest butt joints you'll ever see. Tight bond is a beautiful thing. Time for a bit of finish. I'm laying down some thin down oil based poly to get my first look at this pallet wood glory. I'm not completely sold on the top just yet. And I may do a little stain combo as I've done in the past to unify the top a little more. However, I am not rushing into that decision. I'm starting to feel pretty good about my disaster recovery artsy fartsy book holster. The bendiness with a few dowels is looking pretty rad, if I do say so myself. I still have a few minor decisions like draw pulls, a few tidy ups here and there, as well as putting on the backing board. The project so far has taken me about 27 and a half hours. The business human plan was to charge an hourly rate plus materials. I use roughly three sheets of ply, believe it or not, plus hardware, bits and pieces, that cost came to about 300 bucks. If I'm going to charge 75 bucks an hour, plus materials, I am looking at a recommended retail price of 2,300 Aussie dollars. Can I get that? Should I ask that? What do you think? I don't really know. Let me get the beauty shots and advertise it and I'll get you an update hopefully in the next video. And don't forget, before you go to bed at night, make sure you click on one of these playlists. Catch you later.